Today we're going to be looking at using set notation. Now set notation involves any sort of uh, prob probability and things like that um, and it's just about learning a, a bunch of new words, symbols and definitions um, that will make it easy for us to actually communicate uh, different probabilities and uh, probabilities of things occurring when we have two or more outcomes. So firstly, just remember uh, that a sample space is a list of all of the possible outcomes in a situation. Um, there's a symbol for it, and that symbol is this, this funny looking Greek letter here, which is called Omega. Uh, and the next part is uh, A. A is going to be a subset. Symbol is this kind of, it's almost like a C, but it's kind of squished down um, of the sample space if all elements in A are also in the sample space. So if we have a look here, this sample space is all of the uh, positive integers from 1 to 10 inclusive. That means they include 1 and they include 10. So you can here, see here, this is the sample space, and we've enclosed all of the values in the sample space, or all the values in this set that is the sample space, inside brackets and separated each one with a comma. So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they're all there in the sample space. So A, A here, is a subset only if the values in A are also in the, sub, in, in, the, uh, in the sample space. If there's a number like uh, 21 uh, in A, then it's not a subset of the sample space for this, for this particular sample space. So here, uh, the values of A are the prime uh, numbers, prime numbers from 1 to, to 10, inclusive. So here there's four numbers there, 2, 3, 5, 7. They're the prime numbers. Uh, that we have in this set, and so A is a subset of the sample sp of of uh, the sample space that we're looking at, um, because all of the elements that we've got. So each one of these is an element. So each individual number is an element of the of our subset here A, and it's a subset of the sample space here. B is also a subset of the sample space, but it's the odd numbers from one to ten. So one, three, five, seven, nine. They're all the odd numbers. So here, a dash is the complement of a. Okay, so a with a little dash is the complement of a. And that's all of the values that aren't in a. They're all the ones that aren't in a. So here the ones that are in a are 2, 3, 5, and 7. And these are the ones that aren't. So 1 isn't in a, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10. They're all not prime numbers. They are all not prime numbers because a is the prime numbers. So a complement is going to be not the prime numbers. Now five, and then this sort of E symbol here, but it's like a curvy, a curvy E. Uh, five uh, is an element of A. That's how we say it. That's what it means. Okay. This means five is an element of A. So that means five is one of the elements in A. We could also say the same about two. Two is an element of A as well. Now, if we have a look at this symbol here, it's like an O, uh, but it's more. It's a circle, a circle with a line through it is the null or empty set. So if there is some set within this, uh, within our sample space that doesn't have any values, so maybe it's all of the values from 1 to 10 that are greater than 100. There are no values in that because there's no numbers from 1 to 10 that are greater, that are also greater than 100. So it looks empty. It's got nothing in it. Okay, it's got no elements. Here, this funny N, so it's sort of cursive N, then in brackets A, is called the cardinal number of A. The cardinal number, cardinal number of whatever is in the brackets. So that's the number of elements in A. So if we count the elements in A, one, two, three, four, there are four elements in A. Uh, so we can say the cardinal number of A is four. There are four elements in A. So what we can actually do with all of this information and with the numbers, numbers in our sets is that we can actually construct a Venn diagram here. So the Venn diagram, we've got set A, set B, and then the whole box, the whole box around the outside contains all of the values that are in the sample space. So the values that are in A and B, they go in the, in the middle here. So the values that are in A and B are going to be 3, 5, and 7. They're both in A and B. So there's 3, 5, and 7. Now, when we're doing our Venn diagram, it's not very useful to have all of the numbers in there. It's only really useful to see how many are intersecting, how many are only in A, how many are only in B, and how many are in neither. So that's, what we, that's how we use Venn diagrams. We use Venn diagrams to show just the cardinal number, essentially, of what is in each set, each component of each set. So, 
the intersection here, the intersection of A and B, we said there are three elements that intersect. There's three, five, and seven, three, five, and seven. So there are three elements that intersect A and B. There's one element, two here, two, the element two, um, that is in A, but it's not in B. So there's only one element that's in A, but it's not in B. Now B has here one and nine that aren't in A. So B has two elements that are in B, but aren't in A, and they share three. So A has four in total, one plus three, four in total. B has five in total, three plus two, five. So that means that there must be, because there are 10 numbers here, that means there must be four numbers that aren't in either A or B. So there's going to be four. And those numbers are going to be uh, four, six, eight, and 10. Four, six, eight, and 10 are all outside here. So this is how we can draw a diagram and that'll help us um, work out the probability, the probability of actually uh, selecting one of these numbers from the set. So some more definitions now. Here, A and this sort of upside down loop B, A upside down loop B, is that means the intersection of A and B. So this is the intersection of A and B. That's the stuff in the middle here, the stuff in the middle. So the intersection of A and B is three, five, and seven. And we said there are three elements there. So if we were looking at the cardinal number of A intersection B, it would be three. That's the cardinal number there, the intersection where they intersect. A union B is, a union is where we bring things together. Just like an intersection is where they kind of cross over, where they intersect, a union is where we bring all of the things together. So A and then the, a, the loop going up the other way uh, is called the union of A and B. So it kind of looks like a U. So that, that's a good way to remember it. This is a U and then that's like an N intersection, intersection. So it kind of looks like an N, so that's the intersection. This is the union of A and B. So at the union is where we bring everything together. We unite them, unite them. So that's where we have all of the elements of A and B. So that's one, two, three, five, seven, and nine. Even if, if only A has some and even if only B has some, we bring them all together to show the union, all of the elements of A um, and B combined, and there should be six, because one plus three plus two is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six values there in the A union B. A only, it then, is the elements only in A. The ones that are in A, but aren't in B. They aren't, in, aren't anywhere else, okay? They are only A, they're exclusive to A. So we know there's only one element there, and that that element is two, okay? So we've got a Venn diagram here. This is how we show our sets. Uh, and we can have a look at doing an example now, an example of a problem. So, for our example, we've got a number chosen from the set of positive integers from one to eight inclusive. So that's the sample space, from one to eight inclusive. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inclusive means we're including one and eight. A is the set of odd numbers from one to eight inclusive. So all of the odd numbers, so it'll be one, uh, three, five, seven. And B is the set of prime numbers. So it's gonna be two, three, five, and seven. So firstly, what we need to do is list the sets A, B in the sample space, draw a Venn diagram, and then use the Venn diagram to determine uh, A union B, the complement of A, so sorry, the union of A and B, the complement of A, the probability of choosing a number from A, and also the probability of choosing a intersection B, okay, the intersection of, um, choosing the intersection of A and B. So, the sample space, all the numbers from one to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what we were told, inclusive. A is only the odd numbers, so one, three, five, seven, and B is only the prime numbers, two, three, five, seven. So that's, they're our sets. That, that, they're the sets for our problem. So here, if we want to draw a Venn diagram, we need to box it off to show this is what the sample set is. Uh, the sample space is, and then we have A and we've got B as our two subsets then of our sample space. So A, here A has one, three, five, and seven. There's one element, that, uh, which is one, that isn't in B as well, and they share three elements. So the intersection of A and B is, has three elements in it. The uh, B has two, the, the element two as well, that isn't in A, so it's got one on the other side there. 
there are three values that are in the sample space that are not in either set A or B. And those are going to be four, six, and eight, because they're even and they're not prime. Okay, so they're the three values outside there. So we should be able to add up all numbers. One plus three is four, plus one is five, plus three is eight, and that's the total number of, of values in our set, um, in our sample space, in our whole set there. Okay, so firstly, A, we're looking for the union of A and B, and it's going to be all of the elements in A or B or both. Okay, so that's one, two, three, five, and seven. All of the elements that are in A or B or both. Okay. So that's our set there, A, um, the union of A and B. The complement of A, the complement of A is all of the values that aren't in A. So uh, 1, 3, 5 and 7 are in A, and 2, 4, 6 and 8 aren't, because they're the even numbers. A is the, is the odd numbers, so the complement of A is going to be the even numbers. So then to determine the probability of, of choosing one from A, uh, choosing a, a value from A. We need the cardinal number of A because that's the that's the, the number of elements in A, which is four. There are four total elements in A out of the cardinal number of the total number of, of, of uh, possibilities. So that's uh, eight possibilities to choose from. So it's four out of eight, which is simplified to one half. So that's the probability of choosing something from A, from the set A. The probability of choosing something from A Intersection, the intersection of A and B is going to be the cardinal number of the intersection of A and B, and the cardinal number of intersection of A and B is 3, because there are three elements in that. They are 3, 5, and 7. They're the three numbers that we can that we could choose out of the total possible outcomes. So the total possible outcomes is the number of values in the set, the cardinal number of the actual uh, sample space. So that's going to be 3 out of 8.